In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a nose cone for a model rocket. Now, the two basic components that we're going to need are this craft foam or floral foam, and then a two part epoxy resin. Now, this type of nose cone comes out extremely smooth. The color is built into the resin, so there's no painting and no peeling. It also has an eye bolt on the bottom for mounting your parachute recovery cord. And this method that I'm going to show you could be used for a wide variety of shapes and sizes of nose cones. This particular one is just your standard nose cone, 2 inch diameter and 8 inches long. So let's get started. So I'm starting out with a printout of my nose cone from the Open Rocket software. Now what I need is just a profile of the nose cone. So I'm going to cut down along one side and then in and then down and just keep on going down from here to the end of the paper. Now the piece that I need to keep and that needs to be cut out perfectly, especially down in this little nook area here, is this piece, not this one. So here I've got a piece of half inch MDF material. I'm going to just lay this on and then I can see just a little outline here of where the tip of the rocket was. We'll just mark that where the tip was. We'll just bring that up to the top of this piece of MDF and it doesn't really matter where you are here or what the angle is. It really doesn't make any difference. You just need a section of the MDF that you'll be able to hold on to later. So I'm going to leave most of it there. We'll come up, line the tip of the nose cone up with there, and then we'll just trace along there with a pencil. And then the last thing I'm going to do is again I can see on the piece of paper where the bottom of this sleeve part was, right here. I'm just going to put a little mark on the wood and bring that mark over onto this section here because this is the part we're going to keep and this is going to cut off. So that just tells us exactly where the bottom of the nose cone is and we know that the tip is up at the top. Now I'm going to take that over to the bandsaw and cut out that profile and the piece that we're going to keep is going to be this section over here. And this is what I end up with. Now I am just going to make little mark up at the top that says tip just so we know when we're shaping that that's going to be the tip of the nose cone and then what you'll probably notice is that just some inconsistencies or, or ripples or bumps in that cut just from the bandsaw so I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and wrap it around tightly on a small piece of half inch MDF I'm just going to run that up and down a couple of times and just get that nice and smooth. We want nice sharp edges on the sides here, but we do want to get out those ripples and bumps so that we get the best possible shaping on the nose cone. I've got my hot melt glue gun, I've got a 3 8 aluminum rod. And then I've got a couple pieces of craft foam or floral foam. Now this is a really dense foam. It's pretty soft, but you see it doesn't have a lot of pits and divots in it. It's, it's pretty dense and smooth. So that's kind of important for what we're going to be doing with it later. Now this particular nose cone is 8 inches long, and then we've got um, a 1 inch sleeve here where it slips into the rocket. So that's going to be a total of 9 inches. This particular foam only comes in 8 inch pieces, so the second piece I'm just going to cut about an inch and a half piece off here that we're going to attach onto the bottom. Now what I need to do so that I can chuck this up on my drill press is we'll need to shove this rod down fairly straight into the middle of this first block of foam. We want that to be fairly straight so we don't accidentally poke out into the, uh, the side of the nose cone as we're shaping it. 
So I pushed it down. It's in the foam uh, five inches, which should be plenty for what we need to do. And then we've got the little inch and a half sliver piece that I cut. I'm going to slide that down from the top down onto the foam. So now we've got a nine and a half inch piece of foam total, which is a little bit more than enough than we'll need to get the entire shape of the nose cone. Next we need to use the hot melt glue gun to not only glue these two pieces together, but also to glue this 3 8 rod down inside of the foam so that it doesn't spin while we're shaping it. So what I'm going to do is use the hot melt glue gun and I'm going to put a whole bunch of glue down into the hole first just to get a, a bunch in there and then I'll put some on the rod itself and then shove that down inside. I've got that down in there and then I cleaned up the top here a little bit where the other piece of foam is going to go down. We don't want a, a big lump of hot melt glue up there when we go to put this other piece on. So you just want to make sure you don't have a lot of glue up there. And don't be shy on the glue that you put down into the hole and on the rod. You really want a good amount of glue in there so that this thing hardens up um, so, and the rod doesn't break loose while you're shaping it. So more glue than you think you need. Uh, put a lot. The next thing I'm going to do is just put right along the middle here next to the rod I'm going to put a ring of hot melt glue and then um, a little bit on the rod itself for about an inch, inch and a half up and then I'll go ahead and slide this piece on. You don't want the glue extending out very far because that's going to get in the way of the shaping tool. So you want the glue just to be real tight inside close to the rod. Once you get that glued together you'll want to push that down and hold it for a little while. The foam holds the heat of the glue very well, so it takes um, a little bit longer than you think for that glue to harden up because it stays very hot for very long. So I'm going to keep some pressure on that for a little while and let all that glue in there harden up before you move on to the next step. So before we take this over to the drill press, I'm just going to take a razor knife and just cut off the corners just a little bit. That'll make it easier when we start shaping this into a circle so we won't have those hard edges to work with. Now I'm just going to chuck this up into the drill press. I've got the drill press set to its slowest speed and I've got the table just moved over and locked in place just a little bit beside where the foam is so the foam doesn't hit it. Now we've got the tip marked on our jig here, our shaping tool. That's going to be down. So basically we're going to keep the bottom of that shaping board just about at the bottom of the foam. The foam is a little bit longer than what we need, so if we end up shaving some off the bottom, that's okay. We're going to turn on the drill press and just very gently just start pushing the shaping tool into the foam and letting this edge of the shaping tool just shave the foam away. Now this is going to be very messy. You probably want to be wearing a mask and you'll need a vacuum cleaner nearby because this will put out just a ton of foam dust. Now this is a piece of the two inch cardboard tubing that we're using for the rocket body itself that the nose cone is going to fit into. So what we're looking for as far as sizing is the nose cone is being shaped upside down. This narrower part here, this sleeve section, needs to fit into the cardboard tube. Now that's obviously up here and there's no way for us to test fit that. So as we get it smaller and smaller and we're getting closer and closer, and you can check that across the top just with a tape measure and just to see if you're getting very close to that size that you need, but as you get closer and closer, you're going to have to take this off 
and slide it down onto the rocket body tube and see how it fits. And what you're looking for is obviously we want to get to a point on the bottom and then the diameter here as far as fitting into the body tube we want basically a loose fit. Um, it needs to basically have just a little bit of wobble as it goes into the tube. We don't want it actually sliding down against uh, the tube body. We actually want the foam to be just a little bit smaller than the rocket body. So I took the nose cone off of the drill press several times during the process just to keep checking the size and now I've got it to where this slides in. There's just a little bit of play on that. There's a couple of little pieces right here just kind of sticking out. That's probably from that hot melt glue. I'll just take some small scissors and just snip those off. And then I do see that we have a tiny little blemish uh, in the foam right here. Must have been something, uh, just a defect in the foam. So I'm just going to take some, um, just some regular white glue or some wood glue and just lay it in there and let that dry and make sure that we get a, a good finish right over that blemish before we go any further. Next we need to put a couple of coats of epoxy resin onto the nose cone. Now there's basically two types of epoxy resin. There's this type which is used for crafts and hobbies. Um, it uses a 50-50 mixture, so 50% of the resin and 50% of a curing or hardening agent. The other style of resin is more of an automotive style where you mix a certain amount of the resin with typically just a few drops of the hardening agent. This stuff dries and sets up very quickly. You usually have about 10 or 15 minutes of working time. We're not going to use this style. Um, this one I've used before and the nose cone tends to come out just kind of ripply and bumpy. So that's what we're trying to avoid on this build. So we won't use this style. We're going to use the hobby style with a 50-50 mixture. So when we originally put the foam pieces together, we had an 8 inch piece of foam up here and I added an inch and a half down here, which was a little bit longer than what we actually needed. So we see that the nose cone, the shaped part of the cone, is exactly what we're after. But down here where it would slide into the rocket body, we're about a half an inch too long. I did that on purpose so that we have a little bit more to work with on either end um, while shaping it, just in case we had to make any adjustments. But I don't really want the sleeve that goes down into the rocket to be that full inch and a half. So I'm just going to take a razor knife and just trim that off nicely so that we end up with just a one inch sleeve. I've got that trimmed down. The other thing we want to do before we put on the resin is we don't want a hard edge right along here. We just want this to be nice and rounded. You can take some sandpaper or a file. You can even just do it with your finger if you want to. But you just want a nice beveled edge down on the bottom of that sleeve. So read the instructions that comes with your epoxy so you understand how that works. Um, you can also mix in a very tiny amount of acrylic paint to color the epoxy. I'm going to do that on some later coats that go on, but for the first coat I'm just going to leave it clear. You'll want some paper towels and a glove is handy as well because we are just going to hand spread a thin coat onto the nose cone. Now that I've got that mixed up well, I'm just going to pour it gently over the nose cone and just spread that on before it drips off. Now up along the top here, I don't really want to get a lot of this resin onto the rod itself. I want to come up and wrap around this beveled area a little bit but I don't really want to get it on the rod because that's just going to make it harder to get that rod out 
later on. So I'll just keep doing that and we'll get a nice good coat on there. Now that I've got it well coated and pretty evenly sp spread out along the entire surface, I'm just going to take this vise and just use the vise to suspend this over the edge of the table. You could do this a lot of different ways, but this is just what I've got handy. I've got some paper towels on the floor so that this can drip. And this particular type of epoxy takes many, many hours to dry. So there's plenty of working time to work with it. And then I'm going to let this sit overnight and we'll take a look at it in the morning and put a couple more coats on it. So it's been sitting upside down overnight. The epoxy resin is nice and hard. I did see a couple little imperfections in the foam down here, um, right around that section where the two pieces of foam came together and we had a little bit of uh, hot metal glue that came out. So I just mixed up a little bit of five minute epoxy and I filled those little dimples in and let that set up for a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a second coat of the epoxy resin. This time I'm just going to put in about a, a, little, about a drop of this uh, red acrylic paint. The paint tends to be translucent, so I'm starting off with kind of a darker color to help cover up the green color of the foam. So, as you can see, that it is very translucent when you put the color into it. So, each layer that we put on top of this will add to that coloring. I've got a nice thick layer on. You see I did bring the uh, resin just rounded around the top there just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and set that in the vise the same way for several hours. And let that drip off and then we'll look at putting on a third coat. So I've just put on the third coat and I'm going to hold this one right side up. So I drilled a 3 8 hole in a 2x4 so I could shove the rod down in there and hold it in this direction. If you keep doing it in one direction, what you find is, uh, whatever direction that is, the epoxy will tend to run down and it'll be thin on one end and a little bit thicker on the other end. So if you're going to put multiple coats on, you need to do some with it pointing down and then some with it pointing up like this. I've got five coats of epoxy on it right now and I believe I need just about one more coat to get it to fit well into the rocket body. So before I do that last coat, I've got it set up in the drill press once again and I've got some really fine sandpaper, either 220 or 320 would be good for this. And I'm just going to turn the drill press on on its slow speed and just run the sandpaper up and down along there just to get out those slight rimples that we have in the surface before I put on the last coat. The last coat of epoxy is dry and this nose cone came out absolutely perfect. The shape is exactly what I was after and the finish is just like glass. And you can see here, if I slide this down, we have a nice snug fit into the top of the rocket body. Now, what you'll notice here at the bottom of the nose cone, the epoxy resin filled in that nice 90 degree shoulder that we had, and we ended up with just a little bevel instead. Now, I could chuck this up on the drill, spin it around, and run a file against that and try to get a 90 degree angle there but I run the risk of cutting a little too deep and maybe going down to the foam and if I do go down that far this nose cone is basically trash. Instead I'm just going to take the top of the rocket body and take some rough sandpaper and sand just a slight bevel into the cardboard 
And that'll just give a nice seat for that nose cone to just sit into and it'll fit just fine. Now here I've got a small eye bolt and I've just secured on a washer with two nuts holding it in place. This will go into the bottom of our nose cone for our parachute cord mounting. The next thing I'm going to do is install the eye bolt for the parachute mounting cord. Now in order to do that, we're going to need to get rid of this rod that's been in the center of our nose cone the whole time. Now depending on how well that was glued in, you may be able to pull that straight out, but probably not. So what I'm going to do is just take this hacksaw blade and just run it around the rod and cut any of the hot melt glue chunks that might be in there. Now I know that rod only goes down about five inches, so I don't need to run that down any more than that. I'll just keep doing that until it loosens up and we can pull out the rod assembly. It doesn't really matter how much damage we do to that foam in there because it really serves no purpose anymore. And I've got the rod out. You can see there's a lot of chunks of hot melt glue still on there. You can clean that off with a razor knife and it'll be ready to use for another one. And then we're just left with a giant hole in the bottom of the nose cone. Now in order to mount the eye bolt assembly, we're just going to use the same epoxy resin that we used to coat the nose cone itself. But, in order to get a nice layer in there, we're going to need to chop away probably at least about a quarter of an inch of the foam along the top. So we'll just keep scraping through there with some screwdrivers or any other type of a, a little scraping tool until we get a nice cavity around the top with no foam. The screwdriver got out most of the foam material about a quarter inch down in that area. And then I've just got a little piece of wire that I made just a little hook on just so I can scrape out any that's underneath this lip area here. We really don't want any foam left in this area so that we get a good bond with our epoxy resin and we want this area to be really strong and the foam is not very strong. So we want to get all that out that we can. Now, just a quick note about nose cone weights. Um, this nose cone is very lightweight, and if you're new to rocket building, you might think that the lightest possible weight nose cone would be the best option, but when it comes to actually stability of a rocket, that's not always the case, and sometimes you do need to add weight to the nose cone. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but just to, so that we can add weight to that, we obviously have a giant hole in the bottom of our nose cone where the rod was and I've got a small piece of uh, drinking straw here and I'm just going to lay that into the hole and have that resting against the edge and sticking out. We'll trim that down a little bit later and I'm just going to use the hot melt glue gun just to glue that down low to the styrofoam. Now, in order to make sure that the epoxy that we're going to pour in the top here doesn't just fall down and fill in the hole, I've just cut a little backer piece here out of some cardstock. I'm going to take the hot melt glue gun and just run a little bead along the edge of the hole there. And you see I've got a notch cut out so it fits around the straw. And we're just going to glue that in place just as a covering over the hole. And then once that was in place, I went around one more time around the edge of that piece of paper and put in another bead of hot melt glue. We really want to be absolutely sure that the epoxy is not going to slip around that paper and dribble down and we'll lose all the epoxy down into the um, hole in the nose cone. Now that that glue is all dry, we need to position the eye bolt into the nose cone. Now it is going to go down this threaded section because that's too long. We're going to push that down into the cardboard piece. So I'm just going to take my razor knife and cut a little slot 
in that cardboard piece so that we have room to be able to push that down to where it needs to be. Now because we did cut a slot I am going to run some hot melt glue around that whole area and then stick that eye bolt down and let that set up in that location. Now before we pour the resin I'm just going to take a couple of pieces of scotch tape and I'm going to run them around this beveled area and just kind of form a, a little bit of a cone. That's going to allow me to fill up this area with the maximum amount of resin but not have to worry that it's going to dribble over the edge and drip down onto my finished surface here. Now before you mix up your resin make sure that you have some place that you can rest this while the resin is drying. Um, I've got a roll of paper towels here. you see that the nose cone fits very nicely into that. So that's how I'm going to let it sit while the resin is drying. And now you just need to mix up enough resin to fill in that little area that you made down there in the foam and right up basically to the edge of the curve of the bottom of the nose cone. We're not going to bury in all those little drip areas. We're just going to come to the bottom of where the actual curve of the nose cone ends. That epoxy is dry. I snipped off the excess of the straw and I'm just going to take this over to the belt sander and clean up the bottom. And here's the finished nose cone. Now overall this took about five days to complete and you might think that five days is a long time to create a nose cone but overall it uh, came out perfect and nothing about it was really time consuming or difficult. It was just a matter of waiting about 12 hours in between each coat of the epoxy resin. So I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.